both passenger and freight trains and interfaces with all current braking and signalling systems. Let's begin by looking at the protection afforded by TPWS. At selected signals, a train stop will initiate emergency braking should a train pass the signal at danger. Because the train stop loops are positioned immediately adjacent to the signal, it also follows that a train starting away against the signal at danger will experience intervention braking before any significant speed has been attained. In these circumstances, the train will almost certainly be stopped within the overlap where one exists, even a short overlap. However, if the signal is passed at speed, distance becomes a critical factor. If this speed is around 40 miles per hour and the train is fitted with enhanced emergency braking, the train stop should bring the train to rest within the standard overlap. In those rarer circumstances, where the approach speed exceeds 40 miles per hour, the train may be brought to a stand a considerable distance beyond the signal and thus beyond the overlap. This stopping distance will depend on both the approach speed and the braking performance of the train. To partially address this problem, an overspeed sensor is located approximately 300 to 400 meters in the rear of the stop signal. If a train approaches the signal at danger, at a speed higher than the speed setting of the sensor, intervention braking will occur. In this case, a train fitted with enhanced emergency braking and travelling up to 75 miles per hour when tripped should still be brought to a stand within the overlap. TPWS will only be fitted to signals where a significant risk has been identified. Let's look at the track equipment. As we've already seen, the TPWS train stop is located immediately adjacent to the stop signal to which it applies. It consists of a pair of loops in the centre of the track, which are only energised when the signal is exhibiting a red aspect. When energised, both loops emit a low frequency radio signal. The first, or rear loop, is the arming loop, and the second, the trigger loop. The TPWS overspeed sensor will normally be located between 200 and 400 metres in the rear of the signal to which it applies. The spacing between these two loops will determine the train speed which is being detected. Like the train stop loops, these are only energised when the corresponding signal is exhibiting a red aspect. The TPWS trackside equipment can be interfaced to all forms of signalling currently in use on rail track infrastructure. At the heart of the trainborne equipment is the TPWS control box, which interprets the messages received from the track mounted loops and transmits these to the train's control and braking systems. A TPWS communication aerial is mounted beneath the train and a TPWS control and indication panel is fitted in the driving cab. The TPWS control and indication panel provides visual indication of TPWS brake intervention as well as indications of fault or isolation conditions. The panel also provides a train stop override facility to enable a signal to be passed with authority. A temporary isolation switch is also provided usually in the driving cab, but located within the engine room on some types of locomotive. Now let's take a brief look at TPWS in operation. A train approaching a signal at danger should be braking so as to be able to stop at the signal. However, if the driver fails to reduce the train speed sufficiently, transit of the over speed sensor loops will provoke a brake intervention. Quite simply, TPWS has determined that the train is going too fast to be able to stop at the signal ahead. The red brake demand indicator starts flashing on the control panel in the driving cab. The driver must now acknowledge the warning and reset the TPWS by pressing the TPWS and AWS reset button on the driving desk. The brake demand indicator will then change from a flashing to a steady red indication. However, the train will remain under emergency braking until 60 seconds have elapsed. 
Although a danger signal was passed without authority, TPWS intervention braking was able to bring the train to a stand within the standard 183 meter overlap. The TPWS train stop loops, energized when the signal is at danger, will similarly provoke a brake intervention if a train starts away from a signal at danger without authority. Across the network, with most trains fitted with TPWS, and the equipping of signals where the consequences of a SPAD carry significant risk, the system will be able to prevent most SPAD-related equivalent fatalities. Extensive trials of TPWS have been undertaken on Thameslink lines, where class 319 electric multiple units have been fitted. Under test conditions, where both overspeed sensor and train stop loops have been provided, a class 319 train not fitted with enhanced emergency braking and travelling at nearly 70 miles per hour has been stopped within the standard overlap. Completion of the Thameslink trial has been followed by the national implementation of TPWS, which is now underway. Let's just summarise the main benefits of TPWS. It provides automatic train stop facilities at all fitted signals. It provides automatic overspeed control on the approach to fitted signals. It can also provide overspeed protection on the approach to major speed restrictions and on the approach to buffer stops. Although TPWS doesn't provide the same level of protection as that afforded by the automatic train protection system, which continuously monitors the train, it does afford a significant improvement in rail safety across the network.